What do you think? I think we're dead meat. Real dead meat. You're dead meat! Go ahead and laugh, you guys. I find the final little passes of business. They're dead meat. Welcome to the Dead Meat Podcast, an extension of the YouTube channel Dead Meat. I'm James. I'm Chelsea, more boyfriend and girlfriend, and we like to get scared together. Mm-hmm. We have something so fun this week. I'm excited. Yeah, it's it's going to be a little game, and I like that the trend of these games is me just really putting you through the ringer in terms of <laughs> show me your horror knowledge. I know. I'm a little worried about this one. But... You'll do okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> I think. All right. So what we're going to do... Uh, So some setup for this. Mm -hmm. In 2004, Bravo TV (laughs) did a special called the 100 Scariest Movie Moments. It was a countdown of the 100 scariest movie moments of all time. In order, I think they're ranked. Wow. According to whoever wrote that special. And this is like a show that uh, you said people like would comment on each one? Yeah, it like was how long? it was Best Week Ever style. It was a bunch of different episodes. It was like hours long. Yeah. It was like four or five hours long. Um, so there were different episodes and Best Week Ever style, if you've ever seen that, it was people like, you know, Wes Craven and Robert England and Wait, Toby Hooper. You, you say best week ever. I'm not familiar. You don't know best week ever. The, Is it, it like I love the 80s? Style? Yes, I love okay. the 80s. It's the same exact thing. Okay. Except instead of love people Michael from Black. yeah UCB, <laughs> it's people from horror. Although there are some UCB comedians on uh the 100 Scariest Movie Moments. Was UCB Michael- comedians from 2004. <laughs> <laughs> not Michael Ian Black. No, Rob Riggle shows up. Oh, okay. Rob sure. Hubel is on it too. Uh, yeah. Just those, those Daily Show B-listers? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but it's great. It's so fun. It's worth watching. It's all on YouTube in a bunch of parts. I'm not even going to link to it because I'm afraid of it getting taken down. So Google it. You'll find it. By the way, if you're if you're too young to remember Bravo <laughs> back before, it was just exclusively Real Housewives programming. It used to... You have a little bit more variety. They would do shit like this. I don't think Bravo would ever make this kind of countdown now. Yeah, who usually does these lists? Like A and E? Yeah. Or AMC? Maybe a CNN Netflix special. No, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's funny that 2004 was you starting to get into horror movies because that was like when I was when getting into them. That's, yeah. Yeah. Because that was when, it, you know, my parents were like, well, we can't really tell you what to watch anymore. You're, yeah. you know, a teenager. Okay. So, and this is how, you know, this is how I first heard of movies like Phantasm. This is how I first heard of Suspiria. I remember being very intrigued by Suspiria when that clip showed up on that countdown. Because okay. it was the clip of, uh, I forget where it ranked in the list, but it's the beginning, the opening, where she falls through the glass so the, ceiling. So it's, that's not part it's of this not, game. So there's... So what, what, are, the, what are we doing yeah, with Yeah, so game? here's yeah. the game. Okay. I grabbed the top 20 from this list. I have okay. the whole list here in case we want to flip through it, but I have the top 20. And I'm going to set a timer of about a minute. And you're going to try and guess as many of the moments, specific moments, not just scariest movies, specific Damn. moments in horror that you think make the top 20. Moments can be like whole sequences, yes, right? Yes, yes, okay. yes. That's kind of what it is. Okay. And, I, and if you're wondering or concerned about the parameters of this game even though this came out in 2004 i don't think the top 20 would change see i find that hard to believe that in 14 years we haven't had any scary movie moments that would crack into this top 20 we can discuss that we will yes i think we'll have a very spirited discussion and i just (laughs) realized i don't have anything to keep time with oh do yeah, you? I got a phone, yeah. Perfect. Okay, so what are you giving me? A minute? A minute? Uh, Is that enough? For 20? Fe- Do hypothetically? you want two minutes? Yeah, give me two okay, minutes. Okay, we'll give you two minutes. Especially because it's not just uh, movie titles. It's, it's like it's specific sequences. things. It's yeah. sequences. Sure, sure, Will sure. you tell me when I get one? What I'm going to do is I'm going to, after the two minutes are up, I'll tell you how many specific moments you guessed, not what order they appear no, in. No, I don't want the order, but... Uh, I will, I, t- I will tell you how many moments you guessed, not which moments. I'll say you got three or however many. Oh, no. I want to, like, as I say them, I kind of want you to be like. That's one. Yeah. But then that's not as fun as we're counting down the list. <laughs> it's no. my game. We're playing it my way. Oh, man. I'm 
putting my fist down. But here's the thing. If I guess a moment in a movie, uh, and I don't know if it's right or wrong, I don't know whether or not to guess a different moment from that same movie, you know? True, because the list does not repeat. There's there's one moment from each movie? Yes. Okay, see? So if I say a moment, I want to know whether it's right or wrong, because like... But I'm also going to say how many movies in general you nailed. If you guessed okay. the movie, I will also tell you. Okay. I'll give you right, the number right. of moments you got and the number <laughs> of movies you got. We're just making this up on the fly. Yes, we it's are. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, this is a busy, busy week for me personally. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. And let me set up. I just set up my little privacy folder. So we're seeing the return of the Binion's fold out <laughs> souvenir damn. photos from Binion's <laughs> casino in Las Vegas. With my dad being a super villain. Yes. Okay. That's uh, just a reminder. That is a picture of me, uh, my sister and her husband, my father and Chelsea, all standing in front of $1 million, a million in cash. dollars. Yes. Okay. Let me flip to okay are you ready i guess i'm not ready but i can give it a shot and this is from 2004 2004. fuck me all right you know what no you know what i'm gonna say i'm gonna want more time three minutes i was almost gonna ask for five five minutes we got 20 fucking things all right if you're all fine with listening to James <laughs> basically talk to himself for five minutes, hey, that's what this is going to be. That's why they're if you to don't the want podcast. that, skip five minutes. Fine, let's compromise and do four. <laughs> okay. All right, since you're making me feel bad about myself, this is uh, the worst episode of the podcast <laughs> we've ever done. All right. Okay. Ready? <laughs> yes. Go, go. Uh, the opening to scream. The Drew Barrymore phone call. The exorcist exorcism scene. Uh, I guess ending with when the one priest... Spoilers, by the way, for this one. Uh, when the one priest flies out the window, I guess. Or maybe it's when she comes down the stairs like a spider. I don't know. Uh, let's see. Poltergeist probably has something in here. So let's go with the... Um, you know, the grave, the graves coming up in the, po- uh, the pool always stood out to me, but it's probably some bullshit like the, uh, going into the closet thing or the clown maybe, or the tree. There's so many moments that it could be. Okay. Uh, let's go through some more. Rosemary's baby, probably the end of that movie with the whole hell Satan stuff. That shit's crazy. Good stuff. Uh, Texas chainsaw massacre. Let's say the, uh whole dinner scene up to and including the end where she's in the truck and he's spinning around with the chainsaw. That sound good to everyone? Uh, Halloween. Probably the end. I feel like most of these are going to be like the end of the movie. But yeah, probably the the whole end sequence of Halloween starting with uh, just all of the stuff with Michael Myers and Jamie Lee Curtis. That's all good. Um, From when he comes out and slashes at her to when he gets shot off the balcony. Let's see, Nightmare on Elm Street. Let's go with um, uh, uh, Tina. Tina having her dream, going outside, finding uh, Fred Armstrong, and uh, up into including her death, getting slashed all around the room. What a great fucking sequence. That's so good. It's so good. It's so good. (laughs) It's pretty great. Um, Okay, I don't think Friday the 13th is going to be in here. I don't think any Friday the 13th sequences are going to count as the scary. This is the scariest? Scariest movie moment. So maybe the end with Pamela uh, revealing herself and then like just finding out she's crazy up to her getting decapitated on the beach. Maybe. Here's what I'm going to give you. A okay. little hint. Yeah? Friday the 13th is not on here. A moment very similar to that huh. is on here. Black so- Christmas, which uh, let's say Margot Kidder getting killed with the ice thing ice thing really um <laughs> okay let's see i'm just trying to think of the classics right uh child's play maybe maybe it's a very well done sequence that i actually hope is on this list when she first discovers that he doesn't have batteries in her that's and such him, a good it's such little a good scare. Sequ- the way you react it makes me feel it's not on the list but it's a very good scene. <laughs> I'm very good at reading. And when it comes I know, to games. We've been together for too long to play this kind of shit. Uh, let's see. Let's see. So that's Child's Play. Uh, what other 
classics are there? I can't think of anything specific in Candyman except for maybe the opening. So I'll just throw that out there, see if that catches anything. You said foreign films. I got less than a minute left. Um, don't go down that path. Okay, okay, thanks. Don't. Thanks for that. Uh, I don't think Pumpkinhead is going to be on here. Uh, <laughs> think older, older. Older, older. Oh, Night of the Living Dead. Let's say... Mm, mm, oh, the cemetery scene. with the, the coming to get you, Barbara. Let's go with that. I don't know if Dawn the Dead would make it on there. Let's see. Psycho. Uh, Psycho with the, the shower scene, obviously, for sure. <laughs> um, just trying to think of like those landmark horror movies. 2004, I wonder if they would have anything from like The Ring with the Samara coming out of the TV. That's a real nice spook moment. That's good. And uh, that's about it for me for time because two... One and all right. That's obnoxious. Oh shit! I don't even have to edit in a a noise. Yeah, that's nice. You're welcome. Save me about a minute. <laughs> <laughs> um. All right. Do you want to know how you did? Yes. Okay. You got. You guessed out of twenty movie moments. Mm -hmm. You guessed. Uh, Five. What the fuck? Five moments. But you also guessed not the exact moment, but you guessed three additional Just movies. Three? What the fuck? We're gonna go through them. Are you very? Are you curious now? Like, are yeah, you? Yeah. Because as I was doing them, I was like, I feel good about these. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Did I guess number one? What was the highest ranked one that I guessed? The highest ranked moment you got was number four. Oh. The highest ranked movie was number three. Fuck me. Yeah. Okay. You want to go through? Yeah. How are we doing this? I'm going to go start from 20 and we'll talk about each moment. Okay. Yeah. We'll reminisce that's about a, our- That's a lot, but that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and you know what? Are people going to be mad if we have an episode of us talking about 20 kick-ass <laughs> moments in horror movies? No. No. No, no, no. Okay. Number 20. Mm -hmm. You got right on the money. It is The Ring Samara Crawls Out of the Ooh, TV. Yeah, that's a good one. We just watched this with Brizzy. Mm -hmm. It's a good one. Yeah. I I found it interesting that they, because I went and watched like all these episodes, uh, at least the ones from like 20 to 1. Mm -hmm. they, they do have a lot of foreign films in their top 100, but The Ring specifically, they picked the American one, and they didn't mention Ringu, I don't think. Yeah. Well, I still have yet to see it, but... Uh, I watched the that scene in Ringu. What'd you think? I... You know, they're both scary to me. I think maybe Ringu might freak me out a little more because they don't show her face. They just show her scary eye. Mm. And it's, it's something about that creeps me out way more. Well, but I do think the glitchy effects on Samara and the American one are really scary. Oh, that's not present in Ringu? No, she's not um, all digitized. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, Anna uh, Brizzy, who did that's that episode right. review with us, just, Timely. just uh, I guess, watched Ringu for the first time and tweeted that it uh, was not as good as The Ring. But she is also a The Ring super fan, so maybe... That's just informing her bias. I don't know uh, what the reputation is between the two of them. I think we I think we touched on this briefly in that episode that it's a it's hard to say. It's not one where people mostly agree one is better. Mm -hmm. I think it's kind of both of them have good things to them. Okay. They're different. Culturally, they're very different too. All right. Number 19. Yeah. Hellraiser. Ah, fuck. Wait, can I guess the scene? Oh, sure, sure. Um, Jesus wept. No. Wow. Christy opens the box and the Cenobites appear. Oh, man. Uh, yeah, what's going on with that scene? It's when she's, isn't she oh, in, in the, the hospital, hospital yeah, and yeah. she opens the box and they all, my name is Pin. Well, he doesn't, he doesn't his name <laughs> yeah, is Pinhead. They Pin come God on, they're it. like, I'm Pinhead. <laughs> I'm Butterball. I'm Butterball. I'm... <laughs> and I'm the female one. Yeah. <laughs> Go team. <laughs> Number... 18 you want me to keep going i guess i i i don't like the i don't like in the the fucking hellraiser that scene the stupid the stupid the cenobites are dope that other thing is dumb 
the thing that's like hanging down from its like tail and she like goes through the oh, wall and she runs into him at the end of it that, too. Where it's kind of chasing her around. There's in some the weird house. shit in that movie because at the very end someone turns into like a the, a homeless guy turns into like a flying he demon. He does. He flies away with the box I think to deliver it back to Turkey. I forget where it is. <laughs> oh the country. Yeah. Oh my <laughs> mind went to Thanksgiving. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's an unofficial sequel. <laughs> uh, Turkey from Thanks Killing would be like, nice box, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> and is like half Freddy And then voice. like that's a double entendre. Exactly. We're all like, oh, Turkey. Oh, he means vagina. Yeah. Uh, apparently we learned at a Hellraiser panel that the, that Butterball under, does he even have a shirt on? Do they have shirts on? Uh, <laughs> you don't. I don't know. Well, he was supposed to have a big old stomach vagina, apparently. Butterball was. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. I mean, and it was there on his costume. They just cut it. And Butterball was like the skinniest actor. Mm-hmm. That's all padding. It sounded like it was terrifying yeah. to be in those costumes because they couldn't see anything. They were all such well-spoken, genial people. Oh, my gosh. It was great. And so British. And they so... were super British. But yeah, it sounded like <laughs> hell. Yeah. My favorite, uh, I have some notes on that segment. I'm glad you made me stay on that because I would have <laughs> forgotten the like funny little bits from this fucking Bravo special. Robert England is just like, all of those actors seemed to be in such sublime pain. It's very erotic. <laughs> <laughs> it's so much Robert England talking about s and and I love it. Nice. And then Clive Barker is on it too. And he says something about how it fascinates him that Pinhead is never once a nice person, but he gets fan mail from women who want to have Pinhead's baby. Makes sense to me. It makes complete sense. Man, 2004, back when all these dudes were still more active. I mean, it's all of them, dude. Robert England was just coming off of Freddy vs. Jason. He was still being Freddy, although that was his last time. But yeah. Man, 14 years ago, now most of those dudes are in retirement. Oh, yeah. Lucky to get him at a con. Yeah. Damn. That I love really young Eli Roth on there, too. Just like, yeah, man, this movie's <laughs> fucking awesome. <laughs> That's so cool. Uh, all right, number 18. The Haunting. 1963's The Haunting. I would have never gotten that. I, I mean, I wouldn't have either, but I was excited because we watched we just that watched pretty that recently. recently yeah. Do you want to guess the scene? Oh, man. Is it? I'm, I'm always going to guess the end when she's driving away or oh no the knocking on the door when yes, her, yes that's it. when right. the two girls are in bed and oh no it's not that part oh no I thought it would have been that, that was part the scariest too. part in the book for sure for yeah because I read when that book yeah they're both like in bed and there's just something outside the door yeah it's the part I, I mix these two up it's when the door they're all in the living room and it's after the doctor's wife shows up and the doors start bulging from the outside. So they're oh. kind of pulsating. And then there's a sound that travels to the nursery upstairs. It was that whole scene. Okay. It's on their list. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Number 17 is one you guessed correctly. Nightmare on Elm Street. Tina is dragged onto the ceiling and sliced up by Hell yeah. Invisible was, d- was it the whole thing, like her whole dream, going out back to the backyard? No, it was just the her getting... I mean, they can't... The, the thing is, is with this list, they play the whole moment they're talking about. Okay. Which is cool. And, and something that I think is so cool about this special is for the most part they will play the moment they're talking about unedited Mm. so that was kind of the first time i personally saw a lot of horror specific gore and i realized that i could deal with it and that i (laughs) thought it was like interesting and cool yeah so they just play that scene of her on the ceiling and stuff yeah uh (laughs) robert england during this part Points out how funny it is that Freddy is burned over like 90% of his body, but he still wears a hat to cover it up. <laughs> like, <laughs> why? Oh, okay. I you know, just assume that's style. He's, he's like, it's because he's vain, but it's just such a funny detail that he's like, no, I got to wear the hat. <laughs> it looks better. Oh, back. <laughs> I missed something with the haunting, too. Tom Savini and Eli Roth talk about the haunting, and they both commend the film for being less is more, which I found very funny. <laughs> the, bo- both of them were like, oh, this is scary, but there's not a ton of gore in it. Cool. Okay. Yeah. I can- less is more. That's the Tom Savini, Eli Roth motto. <laughs> <laughs> I loved it, though. I love seeing different types of horror directors 
crossing over to different styles of horror and appreciating them even though it's not their personal, yeah you know. what had eli roth done in 2004 i mean hostel probably cabin fever had, okay yeah, yeah yeah i forget about that i always forget about that yeah because that was that was what late 90s might might have been i don't think i've seen it and then it was just it was they remade just, in yeah. like 2013 maybe i don't know mm-hmm. number 16 do you want to keep going yeah the omen uh, I did it all for you, Damien. No. The dogs in the cemetery. No. Uh, um, I would have thought it would have been the nurse hanging herself too. For sure, that's shocking. Yes, that's the moment. That's that the one part of that movie me. I remember. Yeah, I watched it in high school. It is when Mrs. Baylock, who's the nurse that they hire after the one nurse kills herself. She pushes the mom out the hospital window. It's closer to the end. Shit, I don't remember this. Damn. I See, didn't really remember that. Either. That's what I was worried about with this list is that they're all going to be these classic movies that has been so long since I've watched. And, uh, you know, anything I haven't covered on the channel, I just haven't had the time to rewatch recently. Yeah, but, but it's fun kind of talking oh, about yeah. it's things to look forward to. Eventually. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of ones that I don't know if you've seen this. I personally am a big fan of this next one. Number 15 is Freaks. Oh, is it Google Gobble One of Us? No, because that's not a scary moment. Okay, I have not seen this movie. Freaks fucking rules. It's the <laughs> moment where the freaks get their revenge on the trapeze artist and the strongman. So what happens in that movie, if you haven't seen it, which you should, because it's it from rules. like the 20s? It is or? 1932. Okay, holy shit. This is a pre-code movie. If you don't know what that means, there were, what year did codes, what did the they? Haze code? Was that mid-30s? Uh, Maybe a little later i i don't want to say because i don't Dude, know i don't know yeah my early hollywood history is mm, yeah, I don't really shaky like a, at best I don't but really like the studio system movie and the, so the Hayes codes were basically moral codes yeah. kind of put in place so the, good guys always have to win um, it's because this predated ratings yes movie, movies didn't have ratings before they were just movies so this was kind of a substitution for that and then all movies had to kind of adhere to this specific yeah it was code. like all movies had to be pg pretty much right exactly but this was a pre-code movie and because of that the movie could get away with having all these freaks quote unquote mm-hmm. these are people with real deformities yeah. they're they're actual sideshow performers mm-hmm. they are the main characters and they're the good guys you're supposed to root for them that's great even while they're getting their revenge in the end which is a horrifying scene you still it is a fucked up feeling of yes i want them to go get these people and like do whatever they're gonna do are there a couple of kills in that movie Oh, good question. Because I think it's only like a 60 minute movie or something. It some is. Shit. It's an hour. It's like exactly 60 minutes. I don't know if there's any kills in it. They're spoilers. I don't kill the. Oh. You want me to tell you what? No, don't say anymore. Oh, damn. Is this the moment that's on the list? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. So, what? So, but the basic story is there's a trapeze artist. Her name's Cleopatra, and she's very beautiful. She is a quote unquote normal person. She's just a trapeze artist who. Mm-hmm works in the circus and she decides to marry Hans who is a uh he has dwarfism and he's a another sideshow performer and I think he's kind of like the big name star so he's got a ton of money and she's gonna marry him but for his money Mm. and she comes up with this idea with the strong man named Hercules and so all the freaks find out that that's happening after they get married and they do the goobble gobble like she's one of us you're a freak yeah but then that's when they get their revenge is when they find out. Because they were going to go kill Hans, too. Ah. Yeah. Hmm. But it's such a good I scene. really want to watch it and then watch that freak show season of American Horror Story and see how many times they reference that movie. A lot. It's got to be a lot. A lot. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yes. A lot, a lot, a lot. It's really good. It's... It is on Vimeo. Someone uploaded it. Again, I'm not going to link to it because I don't want it to get taken <laughs> down. But it's there. Go find it. Yeah. It's just an hour. It's really good. It's amazing how much it holds up. I found that pre-code movies are so much more interesting, even though they're way older than movies that are code, like code Hollywood, like Hayes Code. Yeah. And they're newer, but they're so fucking boring. Yeah, dude. Fuck those. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. Older movies rule when they just had no one to tell them what to do. <laughs> and another, like, another thing I love about that movie is so they made it at MGM. It was an MGM movie, and people were pissed. 
that these circus freaks were just having lunch in the commissary. Aww. But they made such a scene at at the studios and it was just this moment of like fuck you we're movie stars we're gonna <laughs> eat in the commissary and the director was like yeah like let my cast eat here fuck you <laughs> that, that's like a great a showman style musical i would love to see Ooh, yeah that'd be cool yeah anyway <laughs> freaks go watch it it's good uh let's see here Oh, yeah. At that point, Rob Zombie points out that if there were a modern Freaks remake, and granted, this interview is 2004, he doesn't think that they would cast people who had actually had deformities. I don't think they would in 2004. Maybe, maybe now. now. That's what I wrote down here, but yeah. I thought that that was... 2004, probably not. I, yeah. 2004, everything's got to be glossy. I think 2004 would be a bunch of actors we know in makeup and they all get Oscars for it because it's really brave. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> but I thought that was an astute observation by Mr. Zombie. <laughs> uh, let's see. Number 14, you also guessed. Ooh. Halloween. Lori relaxes after apparently killing Michael and then he, he sits, sits up, up behind her. Hell it's yeah. that specific moment, but okay. I, I counted it. Nice. That's a good one. Yeah. Yeah, we're all Halloweened out right now on the. We're so Halloweened out. Set. Although I do have Halloween three masks up there, which is fun. The movie that so many people hate. Why? <laughs> Listen, there are legit reasons to dislike it, but oh, I absolutely. see most comments saying this movie sucks. It doesn't have Michael Myers in it, which like a lot of movies don't have Michael Myers <laughs> in it, and they don't suck. That's a <laughs> ben very Hur good doesn't point. have Michael Myers in it, and that's fine. Is it? I've never seen it. I haven't either. Yeah, I bet you did. <laughs> I knew you didn't. <laughs> Calling you out on that shit. I just was like, what is a good movie? <laughs> ben Hur? Question mark? <laughs> Fuck, where are we? 15 was Halloween. Okay, yeah. Yeah, oh, 14 was Halloween. Oh. Any more thoughts about Halloween? Do you want me to keep going? I've talked enough about Halloween sure. for the past Fair. few weeks. Number, Jesus Christ. <laughs> number 13 is another one you guessed. Wow. The opening scene of Scream. Yeah, I knew it. Yeah. It's so good. It's yeah, it's, it's great. fucking great. Yeah. That that could just be a short film and it'd be fine. It would be a really good short, you know. Mm -hmm. That could be one where if it existed many years later, that totally would be a short film someone made and put on YouTube and then a studio would go and be like, "Hey, you can make a movie that's good." Yeah. It's like Lights Out. Lights Out was a short that someone just made on the internet. Oh yeah. And they're, I think that's coming out soon ish. I know Saw started as a short. That's right. It Evil did. Dead started as a short. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know why I can't think of any other ones. There are a bunch. I yeah, I can't think of any off the top of my head yeah. besides those. But yeah, would they say anyone say anything fun about it, or was it they just like it's fucking great? It's really good. It's really fucking good. They killed the main character. It's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot of interviews with. David Arquette and Courtney Cox Arquette. Oh, oh okay. It made me sad. <laughs> <laughs> Ready? Number yeah. 12? Number 12. Misery. Annie breaks Paul's legs. Of course. Uh, was they, it ho hobbling? They, yeah, she hobbles him. Yeah. If you haven't seen Misery. Yeah, whoops. <laughs> uh, it's fine. That's. I feel like I saw that. After that was the only thing I knew about it. It's still good. It's a it's a Stephen King adaptation. Another fucking movie that I forget is a Stephen King book first. Mm -hmm. I they, read the book. He's on this too. He talks about they oh. they got everyone for this dude. Damn, it's worth it's worth watching, even though some of the commentary is celebrities from 2004 that are just kind of on it, where you're not really sure who they are, and their commentary doesn't really add much. But like, get past that, and it's fun. It's but. just it's. It's sad to know that, like, you can't, there's, a lot of these people are dead now, you this know? This dude, it sucks. Like, like, was Wes Craven in there? Yep. Yeah. Toby Hooper. Yeah. He's on it, too. I don't know if Romero would have been on that, he was but on it. he was. Yeah. Can't get those guys all together again anymore, man. Yeah. Seriously, Damn, it's it's a great little time capsule. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But yeah. yeah, so if you don't know what a uh, hobbling is, <laughs> <laughs> it is, I mean, this is, like, the scene from Misery. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's what she, it's a woman who, it's Kathy Bates. She's obsessed with this author who is, it's a Stephen King stand in. Yep, he talks about how he, he wrote this after meeting some fans of his who he thought something is off and it freaked him out a little bit. So 
it's a very true to life story for him. It's like just all of his anxieties. So she she kidnaps this author that she's a huge fan of, or she rescues him actually. Yeah, he's, he's in, in a car, like a car accident. Oh uh, yeah, crash. and she nurses him back to health, but she won't let him go. And in one scene, because she wants him to write uh, her character, her favorite character, back to that's life. Right, yeah, that's <laughs> right. She, he's laying in bed, and she puts a thing of wood, like a, a plank, between his ankles, and she hits his foot from the outside so that his foot just his ankle just bends it's like a yeah. right an- like angle bend it's nasty apparently it was a like jelly filled foot like a prop foot so that's why it just bends so <laughs> it's disgusting yeah and it's Kathy Bates I don't know if we mentioned that oh, uh, Bates. huge role I think Oscar nominated I think for that. that made her famous probably yeah well uh, maybe if if it didn't make her famous, it definitely like was Cemented another level her up. As yeah, a, yeah, 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 yeah. It's a huge role for Stephen uh, King talking about her, and this is so precious. He's uh-huh. just like, oh my god, this woman <laughs> just brought this character to life. It was so crazy. I remember I read the book when I was younger, and then watched the movie, and I remember liking the book more a little bit. The book that scene isn't in it, is it? I don't the think, hobbling. I don't think so. Right? I thought it was. I think he. I think she breaks his legs, but it's not like that. Oh, I think specifically they. I know. I guess I'll have to read that book and watch that movie again. Yeah. <laughs> Number eleven. Mm-hmm. This is the one I was no, not least expecting you to get. Is this the one that you just watched? This is the one I was just watching, dude. Chelsea was like, "Hey, I have to watch this foreign film." And I'm going to be watching this. Don't come in here because it's for this podcast. And I'm sitting in the office and all I hear is her being like, oh, oh, God. Wow. And I'm like, are you OK? What's going on? And she's like doing her exercise bike at the same time. So I thought like maybe she kicked it into in high her, gear. Yeah. No, you're reacting to this movie. Yes. And it's a foreign film made before 2004 that evoked this response. Yes. And I can't figure out what it could possibly be. This movie I had seen, I didn't remember most of it. The scene in question that I, it was the only thing I remembered from it. And it was still just as fucking gruesome. Like, was it fucking old boy, him eating an octopus? Not old like, boy. Like, what? Audition. Audition? Audition. By I've heard of Takashi this. Takashi Miike. I have not seen it. It is... Audition is a deeply fucked up movie, James. Okay. And it's really good is the thing. It's a very good movie. You just you watched the whole movie the yeah. other day? Okay. Because it was the one on the list where most of these I'd seen. The couple I hadn't seen, I just, you know, I'll watch them at some point. They're kind of random. We haven't gotten to those yet. But this one I'd seen but didn't have the greatest memory of. And it was one that I knew you hadn't seen. And yeah. I just wanted to be able to talk about it because it's <laughs> fucking crazy, dude. The scene in question is a torture scene. If you couldn't gather from my reaction, the the premise of this movie and just like skip the next couple minutes if you haven't seen this. I'm sorry that I'm about to ruin it kind of. It's yeah. still worth watching yeah, even yeah, if I'm you sure know what happens. It's a movie where a man who is a widow, he lives alone with, he lives with his son, his teenage son, and his son is like, you need to get remarried again, dad, like you're lonely. So the dad's friend comes up with the idea. They both work at a film studio kind of, and they say, oh, it'd be such a cool idea if we have auditions, quote unquote, for a movie, quote unquote, but really it's kind of calling in a bunch of eligible women that you can kind of pick through and maybe you'll date one and and marry her kind of thing. It's him trying to set up his friend. So the woman that he inevitably picks and just falls head over heels with is a woman like way younger than him. And I won't get super into it, but basically she is super fucked up and super jealous. And she... The, the climax of the movie and the movie is like pretty normal up till halfway through it does it, it almost feels like a rom-com until halfway through where it's like oh it's ha, ha, this dad and his friend what year is this from oh 99 okay they set up this scheme to meet these women how cute and then it just goes like 180 into like fucked up <laughs> shitville it's nuts dude <laughs> fucked up shitville she she kidnaps him and tortures him and she 
sticks needles into him like and she she says kitty 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 which I guess is like an onomatopoeia for like a pain sound there's not I don't think there's an English okay translation but that's the scene and here's when she starts and she puts needles in his eye she sticks them right here oh it is the only one at least in this top 20 where most of the scene is edited it's not in the broadcast (laughs) it's fucked up damn dude there's also just in that movie you got people eating vomit you got all kinds of crazy shit it is so crazy dude but it's really good (laughs) it's really good i guarantee you i'll get comments when people saying it's not that fucked up no dude it (laughs) is it is it's a fucked up movie it sounds fucked up it it goes very Lynch, like the half turn just mm. becomes a clusterfuck and all the color schemes kind of turn. No, and you have, it's really, really good. Anyway, that's what I was watching yesterday. Yeah. And I was just kind of screaming. Oh, and then she she uh chomps his uh foot off with like wire. She like green, green, green. She <laughs> oh, like okay. chops, she like wraps it around his ankle and like oh. it's very hereditary. Yeah. 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 They didn't show any of that. Oh, the Bravo <laughs> special. So that's audition. That was number 11. Eli cool. Roth basically creams his pants talking about audition. He loves it, man. <laughs> I knew it. Mm-hmm. Number 10 is another one that I, I just hadn't seen. I don't even know if I'd heard of it besides watching this special when it was on. Is Wait Until Dark, 1967. Oh, no. I don't know this. Uh, yeah. Shit. I It's based on a play and it's starring Audrey Hepburn and Alan Arkin. Oh. Yeah. So it's it's a Audrey so, Hepburn and Alan Arkin. Right? I know. That's such a weird I guess that overlap is like well, she wasn't that early of like studio era. No, she's she not like she's not Hepburn. No, 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 yeah. no. She's much later. This is yeah, yeah, yeah late sixties yeah, and she's still, you know, pretty like young. Like when is Breakfast at Tiffany's? I think early sixties. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So this is, yeah, it's based on a play. The basic plot is a woman has a doll full of heroin that she's smuggling. I know. That's not what you're expecting when I start to summarize an Audrey Hepburn movie. So she's at the airport and she thinks she's spotted. So she gives it to another passenger who is Audrey Hepburn. And so then uh, Audrey Hepburn's also a blind woman in this movie. And so three criminals show up to her apartment to get the doll from her. And it's like a whole cat and mouse kind of thing. And the moment in question is when Alan Arkin like jumps out of the darkness to like grab her ankle and he goes flying. I was watching the clip. He really just kind of rockets out of nowhere. (laughs) Um, Audrey Hepburn was nominated for an Oscar and Golden Globe for this. Why do I feel like if I watch this, though, I'll be watching this and be like Audrey Hepburn's being a blind woman and is not very good at it. Probably. Right. (laughs) Probably. Um, one thing I love about this is that when it was in theaters, it did a gimmick. I love gimmick horror so much. Oh God, these cheesy, like, yeah, like in theater gimmicks. Yeah. So during the climax of the movie, when all of the, I guess the powers cut off to the house. So all of the criminals are in the dark as well as Audrey Hepburn, the theaters would all turn their lights completely off instead of just the dim lighting that was on during the movie. Yeah. Yeah. For like that 15 minutes. I love (laughs) horror movie gimmicks. They're so fun. Like the tingler is a, such a funny one. What's that? The I don't Tingler. Even know the, movie. the Tingler was. I forget what is year. Is it like probably in the fucking sixties? Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know sixties. It's. Or. I think it's a castle, uh, castle movie. But it <laughs> when it was in theaters, they would they put little buzzers in like the backs <laughs> of the seats, so they would like buzz you during certain parts of the movie. Oh god. Yeah, that's just so sixties. <laughs> All right. Number nine. You guessed the movie. But not the moment. Poltergeist? No. Night of the Living Dead. Oh. uh, And I had get. You guessed the cemetery scene. Oh, then it's probably when she gets to the house and finds the zombie upstairs. No. It's probably when the truck blows up. No. It's probably, oh, I'm I'm an idiot when the girl kills her mom with a fucking garden spade, of course. Yeah, the... Yep, the mom getting stabbed to death. Yeah, that crazy ass trippy sequence. Holy shit. Yeah. Tony Todd's in this segment and talks about it a bunch. Yeah? Yeah. Because he's in the remake, right? Yes, he yeah. is. Yeah. So he talks a lot about what that what Dwayne Jones means to him and just that movie oh, in general. Oh, that's so cool. And uh, George Romero talks 
a lot too about how this movie doesn't cut away versus movies we've been talking about, like The Haunting or other things where we have people saying it's cool that it's more about what you imagine rather than what you see. But George Romero says Night of the Living Dead is about what you see. We don't cut away and we show you Mm -hmm. everything. And they just cut to like the zombies eating chicken or whatever they're eating. (laughs) 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 Number eight. This is the one where I'm going to see if you can guess. This is the one where I said you're close in terms of this kind of moment. You guessed the ending of Friday the 13th. Yeah. There's a movie this that this moment I feel is very similar. I always associate these two moments. Sleepaway Camp? <laughs> Not Sleepaway Camp. <laughs> Was Sleepaway Camp in here? Um, I can look at the top. I can look at the 100. Oh, okay. It's not in the top 20. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, I don't know. Carrie, 1976. Susan dreams of putting flowers on Carrie's grave and then Carrie's arm reaches Got up and it. grabs her. Always end. reminds me of the end of Friday when he comes out of the lake. Oh, oh you okay. You think he's the Jason dead. And yeah, that's yeah. what I think of. Got it. Yeah. Yeah, that's not, I don't think that's in the book at all. That was like a producer's like. Oh, Carrie's arm. I don't think. Uh, Margaret shit, we both read the up. book we should remember yeah i don't think it i don't think it is at all because the book is like uh the book is told less in a narrative sense and more in like a it's like collections of newspaper reports and shit it's, it's cool it's great it's pov it's like different povs i think mm-hmm. i don't do we it's get, like recollections and shit i think yeah, yeah. we get carrie's pov though i don't yeah we have to for the scenes where it's just her and her mom i think Sure. I don't. I honestly, it's I been can't years remember. since I read it. Yeah. Um, this segment just like reminded me of how much I love that movie, though. Yeah. Because we watched it a ton in high school at sleepovers because it is such a great girls horror movie. And we quoted so many lines from it. Like, we're all sorry about this incident, Cassie, where he the principal calls her Cassie instead of Terry. <laughs> and then, of course, Dirty Pillows. Yeah. And it's great because this segment, speaking of sleepaway camp, has a bunch of horror ladies in it talking about Carrie specifically. PJ Souls? Uh, Felissa Rose. Oh, oh about you mean right here. Because uh-huh. uh, PJ Souls is in the movie, Carrie. Wait. Who- From Halloween, totally. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. No, no, no. It's a bunch of just different horror ladies. You got Felissa Gen- Rose. Felissa Rose wow. talks about Jennifer Tilly, Courtney Cox. It's like <laughs> all the women who they interviewed talking about Carrie. Oh, cool. Yeah, it's such a female. Cor- and fucking John Travolta movie. in that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, are you ready for number seven? Yeah. Number seven, Silence of the Lambs. Hannibal. Um, oops. Well. He escapes? Yeah, his yeah. escape. I just like started reading it. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, dude. It's that scene where he breaks out of his cell and he just kills the fuck out of those two cops yeah, guarding does. him. And then he wears the face. Yeah. Yep. That's such a good scene. Yeah, we just watched that recently. It's got the classical music on in the background and mm. he's just like relishing in it. Oh, fuck. That's such a good movie. That would have been a hard one, I think, to pick just a moment from. Yeah, I think the end with the night the, vision is really yeah. scary, and Buffalo Bill, and just him. Yeah, his for, dance. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Man, that's a, such a good movie. Even just her going to talk to him for the first time is really creepy. That's one of the few movies to win the Big Five at the Oscars. Uh, the Big Five awards, meaning all the acting, best picture. And- Best actor, best actress, writing, and directing. I can't confirm that. I know that at, at the very least it was uh, nominated for all five. I believe it's one of the very few movies uh, alongside maybe, I don't know, one of the fucking Lord of the Rings, The Return of the King, when they just showered it with awards for <laughs> as, uh, as a reward for the whole trilogy, pretty much. Uh, but I think Silence of the Lambs won all five of those awards. Hmm. Number six. The Shining. Um, here's Johnny. No. Nope. Oh, Bl- blood. Oh, uh, the lady in the bathroom. Mm-mm. Blood elevator. 
No, the, I, the to me, twins. it's hard because this movie. There's <laughs> yeah. so many. Not the, the twins. Not the tw- not rounding the corner to the twins. Mm-mm. Um, fuck. Uh, jumping out and killing Dick. No. The, the hedge maze. Mm-mm. What? <laughs> It's when the fucking bear blow job. Like what? They did talk about that, but it's not that, <laughs> which I love that they couldn't show a clip of it. <laughs> it is when Shelley Duvall finds the book that says all work and no play. Okay. And Jack, a dull boy. And they kind of explain why they pick it or why they focus on it. It's, yeah. Cause it's like, Oh, he's, he's totally been crazy. just totally crazy this whole time. Yeah. Cause this whole movie has been typing away and that's like, it's Oh, that this whole is, time this is what you've been working on. Yep. Great. Yeah. Oh, cool. <laughs> okay. That whole scene is my favorite part of that movie. Didn't just Coop- that whole stretch. Didn't Kubrick make someone type all those out? Oh, Yes, I I I don't even know that for sure, but I'm gonna say I'm pretty yes. sure a poor PA had to like sit there and type that all oh, out. Oh god, I'm a fucking typewriter. Yeah, yeah, that whole scene is so good, dude. Jack Nicholson is so good. <laughs> that's when he. That's the whole sequence leading up to Wendy. Give me the bat. Yeah, up the stairs. Yeah, yeah, which also oh lends itself god. to a great uh, parody in The Simpsons with the shinning. Wait, what? It's the shinning is like the whole Simpsons just taking on the the whole shining. What season is that? It's an early Treehouse of Horror. <laughs> one. Oh, okay. And it's uh, it's where it's like all work and no play make Homer something something go crazy. Don't mind if I do. <laughs> <laughs> I just always think of like, don't mind if I don't do. Don't mind if I do. Yeah. Oh man, <laughs> that movie though is good. If you love <laughs> oh, hot take, Chels. hot takes <laughs> for me. If you love The Shining and also think it's good, there's a documentary called Room Two Thirty Seven. That which, fucking documentary. That fucking documentary. You need to watch because it's fun. It, <laughs> it's insane. It's insane. It is a bunch of conspiracy theorists essentially talking about <laughs> their interpretations of The Shining because for some reason The Shining just attracts conspiracies like no other i mean because it well they talked about all of kubrick's movies or because i remember there's like an eyes wide shut like tracking oh. shot that they're like it goes around the block this time and this light post is in a different position and that's why the moon landing was fake and it's like <laughs> fuck you guys <laughs> there's a lot there's a yeah a lot of theorists talking about how the shining is Stanley Kubrick's admission to the world that he directed the fake moon landing. Yeah. There's, um, God, I'm trying to remember other ones. I don't know, man. It's all a bunch of bullshit is what it is. It's yeah. a bunch of people who don't understand how movies are made and then read into the things that are like, no, that's because this is a movie and they had to do this to make their movie. I mean, you know, there's, you can read into movies, but then the but they're reading you, into the it's, wrong thing. It's things. very granular, is what you. Yeah, yeah. They're reading into continuity and production errors. That's and true. Thinking when that you're they have, when you're picking apart continuity errors, it's like no, no, no. That's just that's just part of making a movie. I will <laughs> say though, one of the things they point out, which is interesting and isn't a continuity error because it has to be so purposely done, is the impossible inside of the hotel. Well, yeah, but I think that's just part of the mind fuckery of it all, right? Right, yeah, which I think yeah, yeah. is cool. I it's never cool. noticed yeah. it yeah. before. I think in the movie they have a, a a basically a blueprint of the hotel that they kind of track the shots through, and you realize that I think even where it's characters walking around, if they turn a corner and there's something there, if you look at like a blueprint where logically this building makes sense, you have characters walking straight through walls. Yeah. And it's just that that part's cool. I that think part's that's very cool. really cool. I guess that's worth that, it. That that hotel to watch it. is just not a possible structure that yeah. can exist. It's called room thirty uh two thirty seven. Room two thirty seven, yeah. yeah. I think that yeah, I think that's what it's called. Yep. A lot of yeah. It's a lot of it's a it's a lot it's of a lot of some <laughs> <laughs> number Five. I need to double check if you guessed the movie. I know you guessed the movie. I I need to check if you got the the. You have like a tome there of this. It's because I copied and pasted all the list, <laughs> the whole thing. 
Number five, you got the movie, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Oh, well, it's not the dinner in the end? It's not. Oh, it's him slamming the door shut. Yep, it's yeah. that. It's That's such leather a good face movie. Bashes, or moment. bashes that dude's head in with a hammer. That's a good scene. And drags him and close, slams that door. And it's so loud. It's so, and it's, it's just, so there's loud. no music. It's just this dude. He just yanks him and then like hits him over the head. And that guy's on the ground twitching. And then he drags him and just slams that door shut. And you're like, what the yeah, because that's the first time you see happen. the other phase. Yeah. Yeah. And it's so weird because that room he drags him into is a different color than everything else. It's like a red color. And so you're just like, where the fuck did this dude go? It's great. It almost feels like he goes to another world. It's so creepy. Man, the dinner scene. They talked about that too. And uh, Mick Garris was on there talking about how he thinks that dinner scene is just like so perfect and he talks about the the part i always quote they give give grandpa the sled he's the best at killing (laughs) they give grandpa the sledge and which he talks about how that scene is like actually just so funny which i agree that part (laughs) where it's just giving grandpa the sledge this basically corpse at the end of the dining room table (laughs) like it's so it's so fucked up in a funny way yeah that dinner scene, I think, also would have been a contender for that spot. Yeah, but no, I should have realized the door slam. It's that's so terrifying. Good. Oh, it's so scary. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's not even funny. That's just straight up scary. Yeah. <laughs> Number four, you guessed correctly, shower scene from Psycho. Okay. What do we need to say about the shower scene from Psycho? All I'll say is that I feel like the it's probably higher up on the list than it really should be just to give it respect for like when it I came. I don't know, dude. It's is scary. it that scary? I don't know. I haven't seen it in a minute. I mean, the music is very the jarring. The music's very good, and Bernard Herrmann. I guess just the editing of it is really creepy. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I think it's fair to say it's pretty scary. Yeah. I think it's scarier than like, I don't know, even like the intro of Scream. They're, it's so, that's so different. They're all so different. It's hard. That's the thing too with a list like this. Because we can briefly kind of look at the whole list of a hundred, is mm-hmm. like you can't. It's so hard to rank stuff, but yeah. it's a TV show. Fuck it, you gotta you put gotta. them in some kind of order. Um, number three, you got the movie, right? The Exorcist. The Exorcist. But it wasn't either the uh, Exorcism or the. Uh, oh, is it the the pea soup? Yes, it's her head spinning around. Yeah, okay. yep. It's when her head starts spinning around. I think the stairs too. Yeah, I think the stairs. I think the stairs the is really, but I think the stair. There's something weird with that scene oh, with like where a edit? it wasn't in theater One or of the cuts? something. Yeah, 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 yeah. Something like that. I wonder if uh, maybe that was why they didn't even, because I don't think they even mentioned it. Yeah. I I don't remember. Yeah, it might not be in one of the versions. I forget. That scene, I mean, God, The Exorcist is so fucking scary. That scene, the scene where she masturbates with the crucifix. Which, like, like, holy shit, they made that? Yeah. (laughs) Like, that scene really uh, affected me the first time I saw it. (laughs) True story. And I'm going to tell it because he told it on a commentary track. So it's fair game now. Our last commentary track we recorded with our friend Matt. Yeah. He, we were in a horror class together in college. The one I always talk about, he was in it with me and we talked, we were talking about movies we screened in that class and we watched The Exorcist and he said, Chelsea, I have a confession to make. And this is like a few days ago. (laughs) I didn't go to The Exorcist screening because I was too scared. (laughs) And he said, he told our professor, our professor just went, holy shit. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's fine. You don't have to go. (laughs) Yeah, Exorcist. If you if you saw that at a if, you know if you, maybe you saw it at an older age and you're thinking, what are you talking about? It's yeah, not that scary. I don't know. Watch it when you're a little kid. It'll fuck you Watch up. it when you're a little Catholic kid. <laughs> yes, why? Especially that dude. Oh man. Um, number two. I'm curious to see how yeah, you what the feel hell about these, these top, top two because you did not guess either. So Rosemary's these. Baby isn't in the top twenty at all. It's not in the top. Interesting. 20. I think it was. I think it makes the top thirty. It's got to be somewhere in there. Mm-hmm. Okay. You ready? Yeah. Number two, Alien, the chestburster oh, sequence. Oh, that's great! Yeah, how good, good for you, Alien. Yeah, no, especially because like it's you. as as people just still leave comments on my Alien kill count to this day. 
uh, I think there's a bit of a misunderstanding. They say that no one knew it was going to happen on set, so the reactions are all genuine. That's not possible. That's not possible guys. with how uh, how films are made. It's a puppet. It's like a big puppet and a big like setup. Yeah, to- but the the truth is that I think they weren't aware of the exact way it would happen or the timing. Sure. So they knew that something was part of the happen. scene involved an alien coming out of the chest. Yeah. That's impossible for all those people to not know that while they're making a movie, guys. Yeah. But like, the idea of the effort you'd have to put in to make it so for, that no one knew that was going to happen. For one is take, so too. Crazy. You know? So, no, they knew that was part of the movie. Yeah. But uh, uh, is it Veronica Cartwright, is the, the one actress in it who's not Sigourney Weaver? Shit, I don't know. Uh, her reaction is genuinely. Uh, it is genuine terror uh, in the film. It's her like legitimate unacted reaction to it because yeah, the way it happened, they weren't expecting it. And I think the timing yeah. was like a surprise for them and the blood. I think they didn't uh, know that blood would like splatter on them. Oh, so I think she gets fun. blood on They're her in face. The zone. And so, yeah. And so part, you know, the reaction is pretty genuine, but they did know it was going to happen Got it. to some degree. That's <laughs> so funny. All right. Number one, I'm going to give you a hint because I just want to see if you can get. Yeah, please. This is another one like Alien where people may disagree. That's a horror movie? Mm-hmm. Is it a movie I've covered? No. You don't even know anymore, do you? You covered so many <laughs> fucking movies, my friend. I don't know what to tell you. There's so many. Oh, but man. But I don't think see it gets confusing too because you buy there's another hint you buy shirts for every movie you cover and i think you have a shirt for this oh jaws yeah <laughs> have you covered jaws no i just bought jaws that yet. shirt okay yeah. that's what throws me off <laughs> what scene from jaws when he comes out at the end when he gets the boat in his mouth Mm-mm. Rar. no no the beginning the very the, the beginning very of beginning jaws. yeah number one that's number one movie moment. I'll have to rewatch it. You just rewatched it recently. I did. What do you think about that? I mean, it's it's scary. I think a scarier moment, even though it's not iconic, really, or it's not as iconic, I should say, is when they find that head in the boat when he's scuba diving. Mm. That actually scared me. Like it got me. <laughs> but no, I mean, you know, the opening with the the lady's legs and the POV from the shark. Sure, it's classic. Yeah. I don't know. If I'm if I'm number one scared by it. I mean, I guess it, you know, if the stories are to be believed, it like people didn't want to go in the ocean anymore after this movie. I think that probably is why it's number one, because let's you know, this came out in 2004. Yes. The people writing this probably saw Jaws as little kids yeah. and were scared to go swimming after. Yep. Yeah. Jaws 75, like we've talked uh, many times before on the podcast, was a seminal film period. Started blockbusters pretty much. Uh, Spielberg's first movie started mm-hmm. that fucking boulder that's still fucking rolling. The Indiana Jones <laughs> exactly. boulder-sized <laughs> boulder. <laughs> We we went and saw John Williams last night. In Just concert. last night, and Steven and Spielberg Steven was there. Steven Spielberg was there. Holy shit! We were I don't know how pretty far, but uh, we were really far back. It's I mean, it's, it's, it's the we bowl, were in the whatever. same space as Steven Spielberg. Sure, while he was on stage talking, mm-hmm. we saw him with our own fucking eyes. Yeah, he was very small. We could see <laughs> him, and it was just so funny. It was a great concert. Like. I mean, it's John Williams. Yeah, and it's the bull. It's and it's great. the the uh, L.A. Phil. L.A. Philharmonic. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they're the they're so, the true heroes of that concert. Yes. Yeah. Apparently, our cat is uh, freaking out. I don't know if it, you can pick that up on the microphone. It's a ghost. It's a ghost. <laughs> uh, John Williams said he's been trying for years to get Spielberg to come to the bull for this kind of show because John Williams does this show every year. He just plays some John Williams selects and it's really fun. 
this was an anniversary year. It was his 40th anniversary conducting stuff at the Bull. It probably won't make it to 50. Let's be real. Oh, I mean. He's 86. Yeah, that's <laughs> like. That'd be crazy, though. That'd be great. So I would love for it to happen. He finally gets Spielberg to come to one of these and come on stage and talk. So we're like, oh, shit. They're going to play Jaws. They're going to play Jurassic Park. We're thinking, though, one of those two. And this, this seminal moment of, oh, my God, it's the two of them on stage at the bowl. Steven Spielberg <laughs> says, all right, and now we would like to play for you the score from Lincoln's second inaugural address. <laughs> Please enjoy. And it was just <laughs> music from Lincoln, which was great. But also it was so funny after just thinking it's going to be Jaws. <laughs> Followed by, here's some music. From Tintin. <laughs> no joke. They played some fucking Tintin. They played Minority Report too. The end of Minority sure. Report. You know it what was, they didn't play? Was... Jaws. Jaws or Jurassic <laughs> fucking Park. Dude, the greatest don't... score Dude, to any they movie don't have ever. To. They don't have to. They don't give a fuck. They didn't give it a fuck. It was just so funny how <laughs> our theory for this, because what, what was the set list? It was Lincoln, uh, Minority Report, Report, Tintin, they had a Schindler's bunch List, of fucking Indiana Jones. Yeah, the th Last Crusade specifically was part of that little set list. So mm -hmm. our thought was, genuinely, it was just these two dudes who Spielberg. Even though he's a living legend, when he's talking on stage, he just feels like listening to your dad. You know, he's <laughs> yeah, such a he dad. Does. And them picking the set list was two dads, just like you know what. We should, let's pick these ones because, you know, people don't hear them as much. And I think we're going to really open some minds to some <laughs> lesser known scores from our films. Fuck you. Play <laughs> Jurassic Park. I Welcome think, to Jurassic Park. I think it was the most well-intentioned dad <laughs> decision ever to just pick those specific yeah. things. I loved it. <laughs> I loved it. Yeah. So that's the uh, that's that top twenty. Mm -hmm. They also so Bravo did two follow ups to this. Oh, one in two thousand six and one in two thousand nine. I think where one of them was like a list of thirteen more scary moments. Yeah, and so I have those top ones. If you are curious as to what makes the top, I can just run through them really quick. Uh, is this from what year? Two thousand nine. Um, I'm flipping to them. 2006, 30 even scarier movie moments. 30 in the two years? I don't know. No, what's the 2009 one? I, I think want... that one's the 13 scarier yeah, movie Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do that one. Just run through that 13? Uh, in 2009, between 2004 and 2009, is Saw on there? Uh, oh, Paranormal Activity's got to be on there. Oh, wait, no. That hadn't quite come out yet. It hadn't come, come out, out yet. yet. It had been made, but not widely released, I believe. This is a weird list. And don't think... Um, it has to just be... Oh, from those years. Yeah. This is uh, like... I don't know. I'd rather... You know what I would rather do is say what movies I think in the 14 years since this movie came out should be on this list. Okay. Can I just say number one from each of those specials, yeah, yeah, yeah. though? Because I'm sure people are curious. Number mm -hmm. one from 30 even scarier movie moments in 2006, Hostel, the tendon slicing scene. Oh, yeah. That's the only thing I remember it from is, that movie. That and the eyeball, I remember. I don't even remember the eyeball. I just remember that heel getting sliced. Yeah, it's fucked. 13 scary movie moments. Number one, The Descent, The Crawler's first appearance. Hell yeah. yeah that was part of the reason I put that list on there. I was like, Fuck oh, yeah. The Descent's number one, James. Go. I was going to say The Descent should go on the list yeah. uh, in movies that have come out since 2004. I would definitely say Paranormal Activity probably. I think when she gets her leg grabbed in bed and she gets like yanked. Doesn't okay. Doesn't that happen? I think so. That should be on there. Some I think moment from there. Uh, wreck, wreck, the end of wreck. wreck, the end of the whole ending of wreck. Yeah. I think one of my favorite modern scares and what I would put on a list like this is the conjuring when the, the clap. Yes. Yeah. The mom is playing that game that hide and go seek and she's down in the stairwell with a match and then those hands come out. Yeah. It's so good. Uh, I was thinking hereditary when she's in, up in the attic with the yeah. sloss in her Fuck. neck there. That whole attic sequence. Mm -hmm. That's Absolutely. great. Absolutely. I think it follows the tall man, the coming tall through guy the, going through that doorway. Door. Oh my Hell God. yeah, dude. And, or the, either that or, you know, more realistically, the, the moment that would make a list is the old lady at the school. 
when she looks out her the window in class and there's an old lady walking up to the school. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's a good. One. I don't know. That tall guy is what's always. I know it scared the shit yeah. out of me. Oh, it's so good. Yeah, I I want this podcast episode to have more comments than any others because I want to hear all your ideas and suggestions for specific movie moments. Mm -hmm. You know, not just don't not just, just say scary movie title. Movies, just like what moments in even more. Even just horror in general. In general. It doesn't have to be a newer one. Like really scared you. Yeah. I will say favorite scare of mine. And so, you know, broadening out from newer stuff is from Deep Red, the Dario Argento movie. It is when, and apparently this this scene inspired our Billy friend back here, Billy the <laughs> Puppet, which I did not know, but that's incredible. It's there's a scene where a there's a guy in an office and he's looking at this door and, and you're expecting someone or something to come through this door. But in an area of the screen that you're not looking at, it's not the focal point. There's a tiny little door that this it, like swings open and this doll on a bicycle rides out and it scared the shit out of me the first time I saw it because you're not looking there at all. Yeah. And I love that misdirect. That scene freaks me out. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a good one. Profundo that's Rosso. Profundo Rosso. Profundo Rosso. I think that's an underappreciated You know what? Uh, another one would be Inland Empire. Fuck. No. <laughs> I'm not even going to. Laura gonna, Dern being no, scary I'm, as fuck. That whole, her when she runs at the camera. Yeah, that, that scene. And then that scene at the end where it cuts to like her scary face all of a sudden where she's, I don't even know where the fuck she's at. She's in like an old theater or something. And I feel like my viewing experience watching that was just a fever dream, honestly. Yeah. Oh, speaking of David like. Lynch, Mulholland, Mulholland Drive, Drive the, the, dumpster. the dumpster guy. Definitely. I mean, that is another one that made me, I was watching it with friends and we all screamed. Yeah. I, I don't know what it is about that, that I, everyone I bring up that scene to that has seen that movie is like, oh, fuck, that scene is so scary. It really something about it. I don't know what. Is it's just... so weird that Lynch isn't commonly included in discussions of horror. No, but his movies are some of the movies that scare me the most. Yeah. There's so much dread. Ugh. We could make a whole fucking podcast about that, but that would oh, be for man. another episode. I just planted uh, that he idea. gave me an idea. Yep. <laughs> uh, David Lynch movie marathon. <laughs> if you have any ideas for podcasts, let us know because we always want those ideas. We do. That's deadmeatpod at gmail.com. Yes. Send those ideas and suggestions our way. We love that. Do you want us to slowly spiral into insanity <laughs> doing a David Lynch marathon? <laughs> From a racer head to... Uh, I don't know what was the last one. It might have been Inland Empire. His last movie. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Wow. Maybe. I feel like, I don't or know. Or Lost Highway. It's one of those. And then the new Twin Peaks. Well, damn. Yeah. Let us know that stuff. Um, follow Dead Meat on social media, at Dead Meat James on Twitter and Instagram. I'm Care Beck, C-A-R-E-B-E-C-C -E -E -C -C on Twitter and Instagram. And deadmeatstore.com if you want merchandise. It's good merch. It's good merch. We'll be back next week with a movie review. Yeah. But until then, I'm James. I'm Chelsea. And this has been the Dead Meat Podcast. Yeah.